Alright, so after you can't feel your arms any longer, because you've been doing this for about a half hour, this is what you're left with. Beep, 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 down. What's up guys, it's Vince from Grave Up Restoration. Today, I'm doing front wheel bearings on a Scion XD. Now, this is the pressing type of bearing, um, not just a replacement hub. So you will need some specialty tools, but this may work for Scion and some Toyota. I'm not sure exactly what models, um, but the information I found to do this was from a Toyota Camry or a Corolla. Um, I found somebody else's video, but of course, uh, like I said in the last Scion video, there's really no information on these cars, um, so might as well make a video for it. Um, so you're gonna need a couple specialty tools. I had to go out and buy it. it cost me about 200, 250 bucks. But some tools you may already have, or you can probably rent them at your local auto parts store. I just chose to buy them because I don't work on front wheel drive vehicles often at all, but I figured I'll need it some other time in the future, so I might as well get it now. Uh, first tool, uh, I picked this one up at AutoZone. Uh, ball joint separator, it works great. Next up from Harbor Freight, we got a um, front wheel drive bearing and install remover and installer kit. This comes in handy big time. You cannot do this job without this. The ball joint separator you can do without, but it makes your life a lot easier. The last one you're gonna need uh, is the slide hammer and puller set. Uh, this is from Harbor Freight as well. However, the only part in there that you need is the slide hammer and the hub adapter, um, which I'll show you in a minute. But uh, that's gonna be used to pull the hub off. So you may be able to find like just a, a straight up hub puller uh, from your local auto parts store or something, but I bought this kit, it had what I needed, and that was the only place around me that had it. So. Uh, yeah, like I said, it's about 250-ish dollars in tools already. Um, but if you work on these, if you work on front-wheel drive cars, I would definitely just buy the tool, or you could rent it from AutoZone or something like that if they have it in stock. I'm gonna try to do this as quick as possible. I'm try to give you as many little tips and tricks I learned as I'm already doing this. I already did the, the driver's side. I'm gonna do the passenger side with you guys. They're the same thing, just mirrored. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna show you how to remove it and reinstall it. And these are the press-on bearings. So ones with the little uh, clip in the back, you get to press the bearing out and press the new bearing in. Let's get to it. First step, obviously make sure your car is jacked up and supported properly and safely. Uh, next up, we're gonna take these wheels off, 13 sixteenths. After we got the wheel off, I'm just gonna come back here and take these two brake caliper uh, bracket bolts off. That way we can take the whole caliper off. Um, I'm using an 11 16 and a ratchet. And there's another bolt just like this, straight underneath it on the bottom. That we're gonna take off as well. Just be sure to support the caliper a little bit as you loosen these bolts, that way the caliper doesn't just drop on you. So after you get that bottom bolt out, you should be able to just lift the caliper off like that. And be sure not to kink that brake line in the back. It's always a good idea to have a bungee cord or a tie wire or something like that that you could use to suspend the brake caliper. So I have my brake caliper just hanging on up there and we should just be able to take this rotor right off. I'm gonna pull this axle nut off and you're gonna need a 30 millimeter 12 point socket. It has to be 12 point here. Um, that's the only way you're gonna be able to do it. And definitely helps if you have an impact. All right, so once that's off, uh, this axle should be free to move. If not, just tap it with a hammer. Um, and then what we're gonna do next, since everything's still bolted together and it's tight, I wanna pull this hub off. 
Uh, so to do that, we're gonna need that hub puller tool that I told you about. So we're putting it on the car. You should have two lugs here and one there. Um, I just use the lug nuts from the car uh, to hold these back down. Uh, just make sure they're nice and tight. And then once it's nice and tight, you're gonna have to slide hammer the crap out of this thing. Um, this was the hardest part of the job. If it's anything like the other side that I just did, this is going to take the longest out of anything. It's trying to get this hub off. So once you got it all tight and stuff, um, basically just beat the hell out of it until it comes off. And you're probably gonna have to do this for quite a while, put all your muscle into it, and then slowly you'll start seeing the hub start separating back over here. And uh, yeah, just keep going. <laughs> That's it, just keep going. All right, so after you can't feel your arms any longer, because you've been doing this for about a half hour, this is what you're left with. This is your hub. Um, the hub looks okay. Just the bearing, like little cover came off. Uh, but that's all right, we'll just put that back on there because we're gonna need that to push out the bearing. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna disconnect um, our tie rod end here. Uh, so this is like usually a little clip. Just gotta bend it back out with some pliers. And you should just be able to pull it right through. So this one's 11 sixteenths. And then we're gonna come back and use the ball joint separator. Separate that. So we're gonna take my new favorite tool here and just gonna loosen it up a little bit. Set her up like that. Well, that was a joke, but okay, I'll take it. A little bit of pressure just popped that right out. So now we're gonna do our lower control arm. There's a pin in here. There's usually a pin in there. Uh, there's no pin in, on this side, um, but normally there'd be like another pin and you have to uh, open the tab. It's like a weird, uh, Toyota specific clip. Right here is our bolt or a castle nut for our uh, lower ball joint. This castle bolt here is three quarter and hopefully This one comes out as easy as the uh, last one. Now we just need to separate these and then we can pull our axle shaft out of the way. So now we got our lower control arm separated and our ball joint. We just need to take this one sensor off, and that is going to be a 10 millimeter. And this is your ABS uh, wheel speed sensor. So be very careful with that. straight up and out. So now that all of this is out of the way, we can get this axle out of here and out of the way as well. And what we are left with, if you're still here and decided that you still want to do this yourself, um, we're left with these bearings. So 
So now we're gonna get our handy dandy puller tool. Push this bearing out. Okay, so I'm not sure how well you'll be able to see this, but there's a snap ring here and there are two little tabs on it that you're gonna have to squeeze in and pull to try to get this bearing out of this race. Now, I'm gonna try my best to get you like a good angle so you can see it, but I mean, this is just tight for even me to work in. So to, for me to work with a camera is gonna be really hard, but um, I'm gonna show you what it looks like after I pull it out and try to explain it to you outside. But um, yeah, it's right, it's right here. I feel like there's like a little tab right here, and a tab right here. And you're just gonna have to like squeeze in and pull out and you're definitely gonna need a good pair of snap ring pliers for this. Right, so I got that out way easier on this side than I did the other side. Um, but this is your snap ring. Um, there are two little tabs up here. I don't know why I'm doing that for contrast, but um, so you have two little tabs that you're gonna have to use your snap ring pliers. You're not gonna be able to get other pliers in there, but squeeze it together and be very careful because this thing is like high uh, tension. So I actually, when I pulled it out, I was trying to let go of it slowly. It slipped, it shot across the room, hit the wall and landed on a table all the way on the other side. Um, so yeah, before we do anything with the bearings, we have to make sure that we pull this snap ring out. This is very important. Uh, so like I said, you're gonna have to like find these little tabs in that groove and squeeze in and just try to pull straight out. You may have to use a flathead screwdriver like to assist you. Um, this one came out like suspiciously easy, um, but it's out, so I'm happy. As you remember, when I pulled the hub off, this piece came out. So we're gonna put this piece just back up in there. Uh, that way we could use it to pull this bearing. Um, so what we're gonna do here, and I'm gonna try to give you um, the tools I'm gonna use, although like I said, I don't know um, you know how exact this is gonna be to something else, uh, like a Toyota or a different model Scion, but this is a 2008 Scion XD. So um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna use um, right here I have the Maddox number 10 or yeah the number 10 and this is going to go on the outside so what, what we're aiming to do here is this flat part is exactly the same size as this bearing and um, it won't touch this outer housing at all so this will push the bearing straight out so what we're going to do is we're going to set up our tool here. So I have a washer on the end of it, and this is all in that Harbor Freight kit, uh, that Maddox kit. So this is number 10, and we're going on. So this is a flat side that's going to be touching the bearing. We took our clip out. Remember, that clip has to come out first. And then what we want on the back side is something that's uh, going to be resting where that snap ring goes. So it's not going to be touching the bearing, it's going to be touching that outer housing. So we be I believe we have Maddox number three right here. And um, that's basically going to rest where the um, snap ring goes. So it's not touching the bearing. That way we could get this started and um, and that way we could get this bearing moving and then we'll put a cup on there to receive the bearing as we push everything out. So this is the, the bolt for this is a 32. we we'll put it on the impact gun and we're just gonna try to get her moving a little bit. Make sure we try to keep everything aligned um, and make sure that this is clearing the housing once everything gets tight. So I'm just putting, got this in tighten and we're just gonna snug everything up. All right, 
So we got the bearing moving a little bit. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a, a cup on the other end of it. And I'll show you how that goes. Basically the same thing here. We're gonna keep this one here because uh, it's probably already stuck in there. Uh, we're gonna use the cones. I'm using cone 17. And we're just gonna put that in the back there to receive the bearing once it starts coming out. And I'm gonna use a flat uh, for the top of it, number three, facing inward like that. And So as you're going, you should start to see this sink back in, and that means your bearing's coming out. And our bearing is out, perfect. So as you can see, um, everything in there looks all nice. And everything, bearing and all, just comes out the back side like that. So there's our old bearing. So here's our old bearing. Um, as you can see with these bearings, um, these are the, I'm assuming factory bearings, but I'm not sure. Um, they have a magnetic, uh, one magnetic side here on the back. Um, so this, the, the side with the magnetic is the uh, side that goes toward the engine bay. Um, because that's what your ABS sensor, um, I guess, uses to monitor whatever it does. Um, basically, it runs off a magnet, so be careful because there's only one magnetic side on this. This is an OE bearing, I believe. Um, uh, this, this is the replacement bearing here, and it has two magnetic sides. That way you can't put it in backwards. Um, which is good. So make sure if you buy your bearings um, from eBay or wherever you buy them from, the magnetic side goes toward the engine bay uh, for the ABS sensor. Now, if you want this bearing, I got this from AutoZone. There's the part number. It was about $52 um, before tax. And it has a three year warranty from AutoZone. So both sides are magnetic, so you can't put it in backwards, I suppose, uh, which is great because I would hate to do this job and then realize uh, that I put it in backwards and have an ABS light or something like that. Um, so basically, it's ready to go back together. So what we're gonna do is just take this pair, um, just inspect your, just inspect your housing, make sure everything looks good. It should be really nice and clean in there. Um, because the clearances are so tight that there's no room for rust or anything else. And also make sure that um, that channel where your snap ring went, make sure that's uh, clean and free of stuff as well. So what we're gonna do is really just push it in the back. Um, it'll You'll feel it like bind up and just leave it there. And then we're gonna use our um, tool that we just use to push that bearing out and we're going to use it to push it back push it back in um, a different way all right so to go back in we're just going to push this bearing in a little bit and uh, make sure your magnetic strip is on this back side here I'm using the number six 
and the number six is going just like that and we want it to basically be the same size as this bearing just a hair smaller that way um, we can push it in nice and flush and then I'm using a number three on the front with the flat uh, facing inward so just like this in the front we're going to tighten it up to hold this with an adjustable wrench in the back but you can see the bearing start sucking in from the back Then pretty much just go till it stops. There's a lip in the front. So there's a lip in the front, so that'll stop it from uh, spinning around too, too much. There, you can go all the way till it stops. Um, there's a, a, um, a ridge right here in the front that is gonna keep the bearing from coming out the other side. So basically just send her home until she touches that um so it touches that lip and then we're just going to double check to make sure it's all the way in in the back by uh just looking for where that snap ring sits in and making sure that the area the channel where the snap ring sits is all clear and uh you can put that snap ring back in so use your pliers uh pinch it close and make sure you put those two tabs in that opening area. And then, uh, yeah, you'll be all set. All right, so we put our snap ring back in. Everything is back in the groove, all nice. And our magnetic strip is in the back. Um, we're gonna wait to put this AVS sensor back in because I wanna push the hub in from the front and then we'll start reassembly. All right, so now that the bearing is in, the snap ring is in, we're gonna press the, uh, the hub back in. So we're gonna do the same thing as before. We're kinda just gonna, well, kinda gonna sit it in there and try to sit it in there if it'll stay. But what we wanna do is for the back side, the inside over here, we're gonna use, or I'm using this number 13 uh, facing inward. So basically, we're gonna be, I don't know if you can see it, but we be right up against the inner uh, wall of the bearing. So, the inner part of the bearing very important that way we don't suck that uh, middle of the bearing out when we're using that to pry against all right so I'm gonna put this one in the back and then we have our hub with number eight on the front of it and a washer You may need to hold the back um, with a wrench.
And once it stops, you're good. Pieces out of the back there. But everything looks good there, so now we're just on the assembly part. All right, so that's better. I made a mistake. Uh, the flat side has to go in um, because I guess the inner part here was stopping the hub from going all the way in. So make sure you use the flat side uh, toward the bearing. But once again, everything's good. Moving nice and firm. No, uh, no play in it. Now the hub's all back together, everything's tight and looks good. Um, what we could do is we'll put this little ABS sensor back in now with that 10 millimeter. And tighten that up. All right, next up, we're going to put the axle shaft back in. So just pull the assembly here. Just pull it out a little bit. and put that ball joint back in. It's gonna take some convincing, but you got it. All right, and then same with our tie rod end over here. And then just put their nuts on and tighten those down and make sure if they have clips, you put those clips back in. steering and our lower control arm bolted up. Um, now we go ahead and put on the brakes. So first we're going to put the rotor on. And then um, with our brake caliper bolts, I, I usually just put some blue thread locker, just a tiny dot, um, just to help a little bit. We're just going to lower the uh, We'll bracket it back down where it goes and reinstall that quick. Now the caliper is back together. Let's we'll throw on the uh, 30 millimeter 12 point and hammer it down because she don't go no more. After that, put the wheel back on and you're done. Yes, yeah, so that's how you replace uh, wheel, front wheel bearings on a Scion XD or any other Toyota Scion that has the press-in bearings. Uh, once again, not sure exactly what year, make, model, like this could apply to, but I know there's nothing else for Scion on YouTube that I found. So enjoy. If this helped you guys, uh, make sure you guys drop a thumbs up and uh, comment. Feel free to subscribe. But yeah, I got a lot of stuff coming, a lot of cars. Um, it's just whenever I film and edit the videos, so. Uh, make sure you guys subscribe. I'm trying to upload as often as I can and uh, take it easy. Have fun.